Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Looks like we have a, a new topic. I don't recall we've ever done this particular show before. Hey, eight years in, Matt. Why not bring in some new stuff? Uh, it seems like it's a slow week for graded stakes racing, frankly. Uh, things are going to happen quick after this weekend, but we didn't really love any race of the week, folks. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the six huge Kentucky Derby preps coming up, six big ones coming up over the next four weeks. And uh, we're going to look at the top contenders for each. Uh, there, there could be some fluctuation now between race time, but these are the horses that we think are most likely to lead the way in each of these six preps. Matt, are you ready? I am ready, Brian. Okay, let's jump right in. We're going to go, Matt, first to the first one on the calendar, which is a week from Saturday. It is the uh, Louisiana Derby, million-dollar Louisiana Derby, Matt. It's the longest of any of these major Kentucky Derby preps. Yeah, and I think that's good. Th uh, that's a good thing. Getting close to that classic mile and a quarter distance of the Kentucky Derby. We'll be taking a look at six of the 100 point races. One by 100 point, that's the points to the winners. And, and of course, those races have been important and they have been significant. Um, since the point system began, most years, the Derby winner has been a winner of one of those 100-point races. Didn't happen last year. Uh, Medina Spirit uh, was second, and then Mandaloon, the, the, the now winner, I think was sixth in uh, his 100-point race. But for the most part, these are the key prep races. Yeah, well, I kind of like it, frankly, when uh, a horse comes to win the Kentucky Derby and doesn't win one of these big six. These are the big six. As Matt said, they're all 100 point for the winner on the qualifying point scale. But uh, there's also one other 100 point scale, and that's uh, the uh, uh, UAE Derby. Certainly, that's not producing horses like this. So we're calling them the big six. And uh, you don't have to win the big six, but you better show a pretty decent race in the big six. Mandaloon is the only horse recently I can think of who truly ran a huge race in the Kentucky Derby without running well in his final prep and one of these big six. So getting back to the Louisiana Derby, these are the top contenders right now as we see it. Remember, Matt, this race is only a week and a half away. Clearly, Epicenter looks like the favorite. Uh, the horses he beat last time in the Risen Star look like they're going to go elsewhere, uh, at least the top two, top two rivals in that Risen Star. Uh, that would be uh, uh, a smile happy in Zandon. But Epicenter was most impressive in winning that Louisiana Derby. Most impressive for sure. And, and Epicenter has already got 64 Derby points in the recent Kentucky Derby future pool that, that was open last weekend. He closed at odds of 13 to 1. He's got a really, you know, he's got a relatively good buyer speed figure in t in terms of the type of figures that have been indicators in the past or expect expected in the past of horses that are legitimate Kentucky Derby winners. Um, like you said, geared down at the end of that uh, open length victory uh, in the Risen Star, and yeah, he has kind of scared away. Uh, the competition, maybe in terms of uh, the 100-point races that we're going to talk about, uh, maybe the, the, the least star-studded field. Uh, maybe. Maybe that is. Uh, you certainly could talk about a few other races here, and I, I think the Louisiana Derby is, is trying to uh, uh, bump out uh, maybe the uh, Arkansas Derby, which was, was hot for a while as, as the big prep kind of in the uh, – the middle south there but uh i'm not sure that he scared away the competition I, I i tend to think smile happy might have been pointed in a different direction all along and, and maybe zandon too so uh certainly he got the trip in there matt in, in which he was able to set the pace dictate the pace not have a really tough time on the lead and then yeah he was really strong i mean looking at that stretch run he was very strong and no reason to leave he can't get a mile three sixteenths after that risen derby run but on the other hand, I think Zandon and uh, Smile Hoppy did not have the race setups in that day, and I, I think they can improve. But this race, the Louisiana Derby Epicenter, is the clear favorite. I'm a little surprised. 
price. He's only 13 to 1 on the uh, uh, future wager, as impressive he looked in that race. The son of not this time, trained by uh, Steve Asmussen, of course. And he's, uh, he's won a bunch of races recently. Looks good. Controlling speed as well. The horse that we have next on this list, Matt, is, uh, is certainly not a speed horse. Uh, uh, Keith DeSormo has called me midnight coming in pretty fresh after winning the uh, LeCompte uh, in January. Yeah, that was a nice run. And and we're talking about <clears throat> that mile and 3 sixteenths distance. We're talking about the long stretch at uh, uh, Fairgrounds Race Course and, and – uh, call me happy having had success there already. Those are, uh, you know, those are good uh, uh, features to have. Certainly if there's a more contested pace that Epicenter is going to have to face. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. A mile three sixteenths, possibly more pace pressure than we saw in the Risen Star. You would think there would have to be after the Risen Star, but you never know for sure how the race is going to be run. Call me midnight was a long shot winner of the La Comps, but uh, there were some signs he was getting good last year in Kentucky as a two-year-old. And, uh, you know, I kind of liked the freshening, waiting for the Louisiana Derby this time for the Son of Midnight Lou, kind of a, a, a horse off the radar on most Derby lists. So call me Midnight One to watch. Rattle and Roll did not run great. We didn't pick him to win the Fountain of Youth by any stretch last week. We thought it was more of a tightener, or a couple of weeks ago, I should say. Now uh, the Son of Connect will move to fairgrounds get some extra distance, have that one race under his belt. And certainly uh, we would hope Rattle and Roll would look more like he did as a two-year-old than he did in that Fountain of Youth run. Yeah, and you're talking about uh, as a two-year-old with his victory in the Buter's, Breeders' Futurity that got him 10 uh, Derby points. He was also on the list for the Kentucky Derby Future Wager and closed at 31. Um, yeah, you know, both Brian and I don't necessarily have to see a horse coming into a race after a victory, but, you know, I tend to want to have seen more from a horse than I saw from Rattle and Roll uh, in the Fountain of Youth. Right. He'll have to wake up. Sometimes horses do wake up after one race, but uh, it was not great in the Fountain Youth. So Rattle and Roll will need to wake up. Certainly a very good two-year-old, though. Uh, the next horse on the list, Matt, Zazos, son of Munnings, trained by Brad Cox. Uh, he broke his maiden at Fairgrounds. Then he went over to Oaklawn Park, Matt, and that second race of his life, that allowance win at Oaklawn Park looked awfully, awfully impressive. It sure did. You got to look impressive uh, when you're winning by uh, 10 lengths or so in that race. And, and Brad Cox this year, he he's coming into the Derby with a couple of horses under the radar horses. Uh, none of the, you know, none of the horses who have big wins on the Derby trail already. Yeah, Brad Cox has kind of some interesting up and comers and, and Zazos, I think, uh, leads the way. The son of money might be the one that can pressure or at least take the race to uh, epicenter at some point pretty early. Good looking 10 length allowance win, as Matt said, at Oakland Park in his second career race for the undefeated son of Monnings. Last on our Louisiana Derby list, Matt is pioneer of Medina. Uh, a bit of a long shot last time in the Risen Star. Uh, I think he was clearly fourth best behind epicenter, smile happy and Zandon. But on the other hand, if you look at that stretch run of the Risen Star Pioneer of Medina, never quit. He's getting better for trainer Todd Fletcher. Yeah. And, and you know, we talked about horses that possibly might be uh, willing to press the pace a little bit more that Epicenter is going to try and set. Maybe Pi Pioneer of Medina is one of those horses, um, was a long shot going into that race. He was a long shot in the Kentucky Derby future pool where he closed at 71. So, um, you know, a Pletcher horse, going to have to see more from him. But like you said, um, the kind that could do better. Yeah, he ran a good race in the Risen Star. And I think the distance of a mile three sixteenths or a mile and a quarter for the Derby would help him. Uh, I don't I don't have any confidence that he can pressure epicenter early in this race, but he might be a one that can get the distance. And uh, if there is more pressure to epicenter early, might show up. Let's look at the next race on the list, Matt, which is a week later. We're going to the April 2 races. We'll start with the Florida Derby at Gulfstream Park. Nine furlongs here on Saturday, April 2. And certainly White of Barrio is the one to beat after his very good win last time in the Holy Bowl. 
yeah, we got a little matchup here and a little potential matchup here in the Florida Derby of horses that have won on the Gulfstream Park uh, road to the Kentucky Derby with White Abario from the Holy Bull and Simplification with his recent win in the in the Fountain of Youth. Uh, um, both uh, both horses ran really good races. White Abario, of course from the barn of uh, Safi Joseph got a nice one of the higher uh, buyer speed figures from three-year-olds this year, the kind of number that uh, you need to have for success in the Derby in the big Kentucky Derby. Yeah, absolutely. We, we still don't know uh, about uh, white Abario as far as a mile and a quarter horse. He's a son of uh, the young stallion race day. Who's got some nice looking uh, young horses here, but we'll have to see if uh, White Abario is a true mile and a quarter horse, but he couldn't have looked much better winning the Holy Bowl, Matt. It's been, uh, it's been since uh, the first week of February when he did it, but uh, he stalked Galt uh, early on and he just took over the race as they turned for home. He won easy. I think the other horses behind him, once again, just like in the Risen Star, uh, might have run better than it looks as, as far as the final uh, margin simplification was uh, a, a bad break, uh, really hurt his chances, and he finished second. And Mo Donegal was kind of uh, stalled on the far turn and had to swing wide before he made a big late run to just miss second. So uh, White Barrio should have things tougher here in the Florida Derby. As you mentioned, Simplification came back to win last time after that uh, tough trip second behind White Barrio in the Holy Ball, and it was a good-looking win in the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, and, and uh, certainly uh, we saw uh, simplification on the 1st of January uh, uh, burst onto the scene when he was an impressive winner up on the pace in the Mucho Macho Man. But I really like the 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 way he's been running his last two races, uh, uh, coming off the pace a little bit. Antonio Sano uh, is a little bit of an under-the-radar uh, uh trainer but a trainer who has done some good things and had a lot of success in big races uh in the past yeah absolutely he had Gunavera a few years ago yeah. matt and you know what uh sano said right away this horse was a mile and a quarter horse this horse wants distance and uh, i'm starting to believe in simplification more and more with each race he runs i'm with you 100 percent. i'm glad that he's no longer a take it to the lead speed horse like he was when he won the mucho macho man three races back uh, bad break in the holy bowl for second then he won the fountain of youth he seems to be getting better and better and uh it's hard to separate the top two actually now after uh, seeing the fountain of youth what he did last time there so the top two are there although i don't think either will be the top two if smile happy chooses to run in the florida derby i have a feeling kenny mcpeak is going to go keeneland he runs more keeneland than then he does at Gulfstream Park and, and run Smile Happy in the bluegrass. Instead, we have him on both lists because right now McPeak says either or. Uh, if he's in the Florida Derbies, uh, Smile Happy, the son of Ron Happy, is certainly a big threat. Yeah, he's he's going to be a big threat in either of the races that he chooses to go in. He's already got 30 derby points, Brian, which probably is enough to get in the field. And, and in the Kentucky Derby Future Pool last weekend, he closed as the favorite amongst the individual betting interests at at six to one. And that may be because his uh, his owner, uh, Mattress Max, plumped down a, a big bet so that he could uh, say that his horse is is gonna was the favorite in that pool but to get six to one uh, odds also um, he didn't win his 2022 debut but was a nice second as we already talked about in the risen star and if you're not gonna win your uh, your first race of the year then that's the kind of effort I like to see. Oh, absolutely. He was very good in the Risen Star. He was weaving in and out between horses as he was rallying behind that easy lead of Epicenter to be second best in the Risen Star. And yeah, uh, Smile Happy makes a lot of sense. He's He he was really good as a two-year-old. He looks like a horse who wants a mile and a quarter. And his first race back uh, in that Risen Star was quite good. If he's in the Florida Derby, big threat. Uh, the other two horses we have on this list, Matt, are both trained by Todd Pletcher. Two horses who are still a little bit unknown, but uh, Charge It coming off a huge maiden win 
and Emmanuel, who, who probably did not have the kind of trip he was hoping for in the Fountain of Youth, are two horses I could see stepping up. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I'm a little curious about, uh, you know, all the attention that uh, Charge It has been getting. Of course, you know, everybody loves to see a uh, horse win by a big margin. He won that maiden by eight and a half lengths, uh, go on a mile, a son of Tap It, all good things, Todd Pletcher. Um, but I don't care. You, this, this is a big step up going from a maiden special weight to a grade one against uh, an established field against some really nice horses that uh, we've already talked about uh, closed at 17 to one in the Kentucky Derby future pool. And, and uh, in comparison, simplification was 19 to one white Abari was 22 to one uh, personally. I'd much rather have simplification at 19 to one than charge it at 17 to one. As would I, sir. I, I will just say that Charge It, even in his uh, debut performance where he was second, ran against a very good yeah. uh, horse that day and just got beat narrowly. And then he came back and won by eight and a half. So Charge It looks like a horse with big potential. But everything you said is true. This is tough. And Emmanuel will have to step up. But watch that Fountain of Youth. Not a good trip. Emmanuel is a horse I would not forget about. Matt, let's move to the next race on April 2 we have here. Uh, it is the Arkansas Derby, and uh, we have the Philly on top. I love to see this, Matt. We have the Philly on top. I actually think she'll be the favorite after what she has done at Oakland Park in uh, in her last three races. I think that's probably going to be true, and, and it's good to have a, a, a new storyline uh, heading to the Kentucky Derby with all of the other, you know, negative storylines that, that have been showing up. So it, it, it's good to have D. Wayne Lucas uh, putting a Philly, putting Secret Oath into the Arkansas Derby, doing, you know, doing the logical thing, taking a shot to see if they can pick up the Derby points. Um, and then they can make a decision if they're going to run in the Kentucky Derby or if they're going to go, if they're going to run in the Kentucky Oaks. We've heard different things. We've heard maybe he'll, maybe that Secret Oath will try the boys in the Preakness, which, which other Phillies have done before in the past. But either way, that's down the road. Um, this is an exciting option and an exciting storyline for an exciting horse from those last few performances uh, from Secret Oath. Yeah, clearly she likes Oakland Park too, Matt. Those three yeah. wins, the allowance win in December, and then both the Martha Washington and the Honey Bee. She was just in a class by herself against the three-year-old Phillies. Now she moves up against Colts. Very interesting to see what she can do, but I, I don't see any reason why she can't beat this prospective field we have here for the Arkansas Derby. The Rebel did not get a lot of love. Certainly Secret Oath ran about a second faster the same afternoon. But Unoho won it. Unoho won it. Barbara Road was uh, flying late. Both of those we expect back for the Arkansas Derby, Matt. And both of those ran good races, perhaps even better than expected races in the Rebel. Well, that's certainly true of uh, Unoho, who was a 75 to 1 winner of that Rebel. And, you know, frankly, Brian, we, we've seen these big horses, big odds horses win some of the Derby preps earlier on. And they don't very often come back and repeat that kind of performance. But we certainly shall see. Uh, uh, you know, Barbara Road has been very consistent without uh, getting back into the winner's circle, third in the Rebel, second in the Southwest, second in the Smarty Jones. Yeah, Barbara Road is another one of those race day horses who uh, uh, are popping up this year. Barbara Road looks like a horse who could rally up for fourth or fifth in the Kentucky Derby, the way he has his consistent rally. And Unho, oh, Matt, uh, you know, he came from New York, New York Red Ranks. He's getting, bit, getting better. He was rallied well in the withers to be clearly second best behind a good winner and now he won this rebel so uh, i would not throw out unho probably he was just uh, higher on the odds than he should have been in the rebel but uh, two horses coming from a good rebel uh going against the philly cyber knife uh has been up a, up and down a little bit uh brad cox likes him matt he's a horse who um uh, i guess he's still learning uh, how to run and his last one after a poor stakes performance was a good allowance win. Yeah, good allowance win, as you said, at the fairgrounds after running sixth 
in the Lacombe. Got uh, you could have gotten thirty six to one odds on him uh, in the Kentucky Derby Future Pool. Another one of those horses that we mentioned for Brad Cox. That certainly is a little bit of an under the radar runner. Yeah, and and if you were questioning um, uh, Charge It in the Florida Derby, I think you have to question then we the people a little bit. Although he does have two wins and he's beaten winners. Uh, a son of constitution for Rudolph Brissett, uh, maiden winner, didn't get started until February, Matt, uh, but he came back with a nice allowance win uh, just a few weeks ago, both at Oakland Park. So he likes the track and he looked good, especially in that second performance. Yeah, that's for sure. For trainer Rudolph uh, Brissett, um, son of constitution, R like you said, Brian, uh, two nice looking wins, a maiden win. And then that allowance win was even more visually impressive going long at Oaklawn Park. Yeah. Yeah. He has some secret oath into him in that he's uh, dominating his races and he's doing it at Oaklawn Park. I could see him being the second choice actually in this Arkansas Derby off of those two big wins. All right, Matt, we're going to move to April 9. We're, we're about three weeks out from the uh, next race is on our list. It's the Wood Memorial first. And I'm starting to get excited about this Wood Memorial, Matt, to tell you the truth. Uh, horses coming from different places, and they and they all interest me, including, obviously, Morello, who's done absolutely nothing wrong. Yeah, and, and I feel like you said, I think the Derby Trail races uh, in New York this year at Aqueduct have some more interesting prospects, have some prospects in them that, you know, I think you have to take seriously uh, uh, as contenders for the Kentucky Derby. And you mentioned Morello, who is three for three, uh, uh, won the Jimmy Wingfield uh, at Aqueduct, came back and won the Gotham uh, combined in those three victories has won by 14 lengths, got enough points already to get into the Derby field and was 17 to one in that Kentucky Derby future wager. Yeah, the thing about the Gotham, we, we both, I think we both picked Morello to win the Gotham and, and I guess a lot of people did because he ended up going at low odds. But the thing about Morello is, I think Dean's List is a very nice sprinter and Morello kind of ambled him up, ambled up to him pretty easily. And then the way he uh, quickly took over at the eighth ball was visually impressive. And he was just striding out to the wire here in this Gotham. So uh, six furlongs, seven furlongs, eight furlongs in his first three. Now he'll go nine furlongs. It might be a little bit of a question for the Son of Classic Empire, but he's looked terrific in those three wins, Matt. But there are other interesting horses uh, we expect for the Wood Memorial. Mo Donegal, we have second on the list. And I still think Mo Donegal is a very viable Kentucky Derby horse. Uh, he's got a win over the track at Aqueduct, as we know. And uh, again, I thought his uh, uh, last race in the uh, Holy Bowl was better than it looked because he really didn't have running room. He had to wait, wait, swing out wide, and he was flying in that Holy Bowl late. He was making up ground for sure, Brian, and you mentioned his win in the Remsen, one of those Todd Pletcher horses that is less on the precocious side and, and one of those more that, you know, to me, seems like one that's going to get better and better as he gets older and older, uh, whether that's heading into the Kentucky Derby or later as a three-year-old or even a, or even as an older horse if he stays healthy. But uh, no reason not to think that uh, – Mo Donegal is uh, is going to run a good race back in New York, running at Aqueduct. Yeah, nine furlongs, just like when he won the Remsen. And, of course, we know he beat a good horse when he beat Sandin in that Remsen late last year. Another interesting horse on the list, Matt, early voting. You've liked him all along, the son of Gunrunner from the stable of Chad Brown. Yeah, and another, another one who seems to be – going on that pattern of, you know, winning a 10 point race, skipping the 50 point races and coming back in the hundred point races, uh, you know, about a month away from the Kentucky Derby. He's two for two. He won the withers. He was certainly flattered when horses have come out of that withers and run well, particularly when we mentioned, uh, the rebel winner, Un Oho, um, uh, was 19 to one coming out of the Kentucky Derby future wager. Yeah, early voting you have to be impressed with. You're right, he's kind of the same uh, 
pattern and, and it fits Chad Brown's training style, but the same pattern is calming mid 91 early on in the year. And now he's waiting, waiting, waiting until he comes back in the Wood Memorial. And I've even heard rumblings that he might wait after the Wood Memorial until the Preakness, but we shall see about that. But uh, yeah, the uh, Withers win was comprehensive. It was easy. He controlled the lead. Unho Ho came flying late to be clearly second. Unho Ho came out of that race to win the Rebel. Uh, early voting was flattered, as you say. Early voting could be a very good horse, lightly raced horse for trainer Chad Brown. The others on the list, I, I think uh, there's a gap here between the top three and the rest on the list, Matt. But Shipsational keeps running good races. Another New York bred. Eddie Barker's got him going. He ran another good race in the Tampa Bay Derby, just missing second place. Yeah, let's not sleep on the New York breads because there have been plenty of times when they've uh, they've pulled the up pulled the upsets and ship sational now coming back to New York, uh, back to his uh, back to his home barn after the third uh, in the Tampa Bay Derby and the second in the Sam F Davis, both between both behind uh, uh, Classic Causeway, who as we know got loose in the lead and had everything his way. Yeah, although I wouldn't say that about Classic Causeway in the previous race, the Sam F. Davis. But Ship Sational ran two good races there at Tampa Bay Downs. Aqueduct is his track. Uh, I wouldn't throw him out. Uh, clearly the fourth choice, though. Last horse on the wrist, Matt, uh, list, Matt, is another New York red. Uh, yeah, no, a, yeah, undefeated, right? Yeah, undefeated. Three for three. New York bred. Two New York bred stakes already at Aqueduct. So he's going to be racing out of his stall. And... Uh, against this kind of group is going to come with some good odds. Yeah, good odds for sure. Good good group there in the Wood Memorial, and the Bluegrass is shaping up on the same day at Keeneland as a good field as well, Matt. Classic Causeway, uh, we, we expect him to get another race in after that Tampa Bay Derby, which was eight weeks out from the Kentucky Derby, and the uh, Bluegrass makes perfect sense. He ran against Smile Happy last year there, and, and I think he's gotten better since then. Classic Causeway, certainly the horse to talk about most in the bluegrass, unless, of course, Smile Hoppy's in the race, which we think he could be. And then the bluegrass is looking like a very good rematch of that breeder's futurity. Yeah, it is looking like a good uh, a good race. And then particularly with some other horses who uh, might start in that field, Classic Causeway has come back and won both of his starts this year on the Derby Trail. He actually is the leader uh, on the derby points uh uh list with uh 66 points already closed at 10 to 1 on the uh you know on the kentucky derby future wager recently those two victories at tampa were impressive uh um, naysayers for classic causeway are going to say those races weren't particularly fast and and he did not earn the kind of buyer speed figures that we that i have been mentioning about some of the other uh, contenders. Yeah, I'm not worried about buyer speed figures one bit, Matt Shipman, but we'll see. I think Classic Causeways for real. I misspoke. It's not a Breeders' Futurity rematch. It's a Kentucky Jockey Club rematch where Smile Happy beat Classic Causeway. But we kind of expect them both to be at Keeneland. I think, as I said, Smile Happy more likely for this race. It looks like Chad Brown is coming back to the bluegrass. He's run horses at Keeneland a lot in, uh, in the last few springs in Zandon. We haven't talked about him yet, Matt. Uh, bad break, uh, uh, bad start, way out of it early uh, last time in Louisiana. He's only had three starts. He's only won one, but looks like an awfully good horse. Yes, he certainly does. Uh, uh, third uh, in that Risen Star, and we talked about uh, his performance in there. And we, you know, we saw the replay. Was second in the in the Remsen, that rough and tumble stretch run against Mo Donegal, again, where Zandon appeared to get the worst of it. Um, if things go his way and he gets a good trip, a clean trip, we'll see how good Zandon is. Yeah, this bluegrass is really shaping up if we get the top three there. Throw in a couple others, Matt. Uh, Grantham was a long shot second place finisher in the Tampa Bay Derby, holding off uh, Shipsational recently behind Classic Causeway in the Tampa Bay Derby. They expect to uh, bring him back to uh, uh, Keeneland for the Bluegrass. Ethereal Road it was my long shot uh, in the Rebel, and he ran a very good race there, Matt. Um, kind of split uh, two that we've already talked about to be second in the Rebel with Un Oho. 
and uh, who was the other one? Barbara Road. So Elthoro Road is uh, getting good for uh, Sonic Quality Road for trainer D. Wayne Lucas. Yeah, another one for D. D Wayne Lucas. Very nice uh, three-year-old kind of now in the shadows of the Philly uh, secret oath, but uh, ran a good enough race in the Rebel. Good enough for sure. All right, Matt, uh, we're on our final prep. And while we've been saying the wood and the bluegrass are looking strong, I guess the Santa Anita Derby is looking strong. We just don't have a loss to present here. We kind of see it as a two horse race as of now. It's still April 9. It's still uh, a few weeks away. But the, the top two look pretty imposing in the Santa Anita Derby. There they are all alone on this top contenders for the Santa Anita Derby, Matt. For, Forbidden Kingdom certainly has been become the most talked about horse in recent weeks, and it's because of the performance that he uh, threw down in the San Felipe. Yeah, and before he was the most talked about horse, uh, uh, Messier was the most talked about horse. But yeah, uh, 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 Forbidden Kingdom for uh, trainer Richard Mandela picked up 50 points uh, in that in that victory in the San Felipe when he won easily. Uh, uh, final margin was uh, six lengths. He he looked like he was having a good old time in that race because he. He was on the lead early. He was on the lead going around the turn, and he's got his ears up and and looked like he was just you know totally relaxed and going easily. Uh, um, an exciting prospect for uh, Mandela, who you know doesn't start many in the Kentucky Derby. He closed at seven to one. Like you said, has gotten a lot of attention um, in the Kentucky Derby future wager. Yeah, absolutely. And and probably with good reason. He ran fast early in the San Felipe mm -hmm. mat, and he just dominated the race, as you said. It was men against boys. Uh, Forbidden Kingdom, you know, I haven't been betting these California speed horses, and it's been hurting me in the Kentucky Derby of late. Uh, horses like Authentic and Medina Spirit. Uh, this one, this one looks scary again uh, with that speed. Uh, mile and a quarter is a question. Still for the son of American Pharaoh, because he's only been uh, a mile of 16th uh, and he did it with an early, easy, early pace in the San Felipe. He'll get a test again because the last horse that actually beat him, Matt, in a horse race was Messier. And Messier is expected for the Santa Anita Derby. Uh, he hasn't worked out lately, but the son of Empire Maker for trainer Bob Baffert, not currently eligible for the Kentucky Derby, as we know. But uh, like like I said, he beat Forbidden Kingdom in the Bob Hopeful, did it pretty easily in the Bob Hope. Bob Hopeful, I'm mixing up two different two-year-old races there. <laughs> and then uh, his win in the Robert B. Lewis was uh, even easier than Forbidden Kingdom. Yeah, and you mentioned Forbidden Kingdom being the horse everybody was talking about it. And before that, it was Messier was the horse that everybody was uh, talking about for a variety of reasons. That was a, a huge victory. I, I don't know, was it like 15 lengths or something that he won the Robert B. Lewis? And, and he got the, the biggest buyer speed figure that any three-year-old has run this year. Uh, you know, all very typical kind of Baffert things. But yeah, I, I got to scratch my head a little bit. You mentioned the, you know, the lack of, you know, workouts and, and what the plan is with Messier. Uh, obviously, with everything going on, uh, Baffert hasn't been very forthcoming with information about the horse. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, right now, I still call him the early Preakness favorite off that win in the Bob Lewis, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see. If, if it is indeed Forbidden Kingdom and Messier, that is a showdown in the Santa Anita Derby. All right, folks, this show was chock full of information on the top Ken Derby, Kentucky Derby contenders and the big six Kentucky Derby preps that we have coming up very soon now, Matt. That was fun. Uh, are, you, are you ready to give me a parting shot or do you need a, a minute or two to catch your breath? I'm ready now, Brian. Thank you for right, giving good. me that. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Uh, yeah. Hey, folks, uh, uh, keep this information in mind. We obviously will be back with more detailed information about these 100-point races as the fields are drawn. And as we do the show for those next week, we'll be talking about that Louisiana Derby as we find out uh, what the field will be. And as always, I want to thank you, all of you, for watching the show.
Well done, Matt. Thank you to everybody for watching the show. We sure do appreciate it here at Horse Center. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Uh, folks, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, please do so. Turn on those notifications. Who else? Thanks to Candace Curtis for all these great graphics, Matt. And thank you to being my partner on Horse Center for the last eight years. We are almost to the 2022 Kentucky Derby. Exciting times ahead. Two thumbs up from Matt Schiffman and from me. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.